Earlier, we learned that the goal of this course is to test for differences in brain activity between two experimental conditions, incongruent and congruent flanker trials. We expect that brain regions involved in cognitive control will be more active in the incongruent condition compared to the congruent condition. In order to test this, we'll first need to pre-process our data, which removes artifacts and cleans the images. If you've ever taken a picture and found problems with it, blurriness, red eye, or faded colors, for example, you can use an image editor to remove those problems. We do the exact same thing with three-dimensional images of the brain taken with the scanner. Each of our pre-processing steps will clean up the images and prepare them for statistical analysis, which we will discuss in a later video. To begin, open a MATLAB terminal, make sure SPM is open, and then navigate to the sub-08 folder within the flanker directory. Our first pre-processing step is realignment, which will align all the individual volumes together, like cards in a deck. If you click on the button Realign, Estimate, and Reslice, a window opens up showing the options for realigning and reslicing the data. The estimate part refers to estimating the amount that each volume is out of alignment with regards to a reference volume, and Reslice indicates that the estimates are used to align each volume with respect to the reference volume. The reference volume is set in the field num passes, which allows you to specify whether the volumes will be aligned to the mean of all the volumes or to the first volume. For this tutorial, leave it as the default and leave the rest of the defaults alone as well. In this experiment, for each subject, there were two runs or sessions of data. If you click on the data field, you will see an option to add more sessions. Click on new session to add another session. You will see an X to the right of each session field, indicating that this field needs to be filled in before the program can be run. Add another session and then double click on the first session to open up the image selection window by double clicking on session. Navigate to the func directory and note that there are two files within that directory, run1 and run2. The comma 1 at the end of the file name indicates that only the first frame or volume is available for selection. In order to select all of the volumes for a specified run, we will need to expand the number of frames available for selection. In the frames field, underneath the filter field, type 1 colon 146 and then press enter. However, you will notice that all of the frames for both run 1 and run 2 have been selected, even though we only want the frames for run 1. You could simply click and drag from frame 1 to frame 146 for run 1, but you risk accidentally including other frames by mistake. To restrict our file selection to run 1, we can instead use the filter field. This field uses regular expressions, a type of coding shorthand to indicate which characters to include in a string. In this case, to the left of the dot asterisk characters that are already in the field, type run-1 and press return. This will display only those frames which include the string run-1. Then either click and drag to select all of those images, or right-click in the selection window and click Select All. When you are finished, click Done. Now do the same procedure for the second session using the filter field to restrict your search to frames containing the string Run-2. Now that you've filled in all of the fields that have an X next to them, the play button in the top left corner has changed from gray to green. Click on the button to begin the realignment preprocessing step. When the realignment preprocessing has finished, it will generate a motion graph showing how much the subject moved in the X, Y, and Z dimensions. Translations are how much the subject moved along each axis, 
while rotations show how much they rotated around each axis. A rough guideline is to remove any runs in which the subject moved more than the size of a voxel, in this study more than 3 millimeters, or if there is a sudden spike more than half a voxel size, again in this study that would be 1.5 millimeters. In this study, the subject moved very little, as you can see by the y-axis, and so we will include all of their data.